The best part about Avengers is everybody has their own superpower. We're not all going to have the same superpower. We're all going to have our own independent way of giving our messages. Your angle is going to go from a different angle. Mine's going to go from a different place. Ben's going to go from a different place. Tucker's going to go a different place. Elon's playing a different role. Joe's playing a different role. Jordan's playing a different All these folks, everyone's playing a role. But it's a, even Chris is playing a different role from a rumble. Everybody is playing a different role in this taking place. But what is happening is we're finding each other and we're also inspiring others to say, I want to get in the ring as well. And then they're going to bring their superpower to this. Look, you know, long term for me, um, you know, what we're going to be doing, I'm not born in the state, so I can't run for office. For me, it's going to be more about building a media company and disrupting this entire thing that's taking place. I think this is going to be the last election, if you ask me, where the traditional way of running for office is going to be used. I think this is it. So I think that the model of what some of these guys, like let's just say DeSantis is using the people from Ted Cruz's camp and they're just getting the big mainstream media places to go to and RFK is disrupting it, Vivek is disrupting it. Some of these guys are disrupting it in ways that you're sitting there saying, he's doing three podcasts a day, you're going on CNN once a week or you're going on Fox twice a week. That guy doing three, four, five podcasts a day is going to school you. Because he's going to be everywhere. We ran the data, Russell. Very interesting data we ran when I had our uh, when I had Vivek at the town hall from January of this year, January of this year till the town hall, which was two weeks ago with Vivek, to see whose Twitter followers has increased the most from January of this year to end of July. The numbers. Mike Pence was the only one whose Twitter followers decreased. Okay. His Twitter followers decreased 3%. You know what that's telling you? America doesn't like Pence. America likes Pence less today than they did seven months ago. I don't know why, but data doesn't lie. Then it was small percentages of Nikki Haley growing, small percentages of, you know, some of these guys. Tim Scott had a good amount of growth. DeSantis has some growth. But the only one that grew in 100 plus percent was Vivek. He was in the 389%. I think he's about to cross a million followers on Twitter. A year ago, nobody knew who Vivek was. The only people a year ago that knew who Vivek was, was his wife, his family, his coworkers, his colleagues, classmates, and relatives. Today, everyone's like, why is this guy everywhere? A year ago, you've talked to RFK before. I've had RFK on multiple times. Did you ever think about RFK is going to run for office one day? Like, did you ever sit there and say, I think this guy's going to run for president? That's probably not somebody we thought is going to run for president, let alone run for president and create the kind of momentum that he's created. This is all a beautiful sign that the control is coming back to us, you and I, regular people who are not controlled by mainstream media that are going out there and saying, I got basic questions for you. I want to talk to you. I want my audience to hear from you. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? This is very, I just had a guy on a podcast this morning, Avi Loeb. He's a Israeli, uh, he's a uh, Jewish um, scientist at Harvard who investigates what's going on in the cosmo, aliens, all this stuff. That's kind of what he does. And, you know, we talked about the establishment of scientists, you know, because scientists, you know, they don't believe in God because many scientists want to be God. Because God forbid scientists get anything wrong. They know it all, right? You can't debate a scientist. You know, there's a guy uh, uh, named Tony. I don't know if you heard about this guy. The last three years, he was 100% right. He would never be wrong, and he was a scientist. Trust the science. And he said the establishment scientists don't like debate. They're being forced now to debate. Because it's either the government investigating aliens, it's either professors investigating at universities, or it's private, right? We're talking about it. They have to give an answer. Us doing what we're doing, we're pissing off the establishment mainstream media. And I got to tell you, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, even when you think about in the world of entertainment, the phenomena around Sound of Freedom shows that a film can be financed via a crowd, promoted via new media, can have topics and subjects that while they might once have been considered worthy of Disney, because I believe they for a moment owned that script and were across that project, ultimately it's not something they wanted to bring to air and there are a host of reasons for that. Some people terrifyingly think that even the subject of the movie was part of the reason for the reticence to release 
police it. But what it shows us from a media perspective and a business perspective is that there are now, that we are, as you say, now at a tipping point where there are su sufficient people interested in hearing information that isn't filtered in the same way, isn't biased in the same way, hasn't been sanctioned by the sort of elite interests that presumably would have put men like you and I on opposing sides once upon a time. Your background is in finance. I'm fascinated by your personal story, and I'd love to get into that a little more. But the fact that, you know, like a little while ago, I would have been regarded as, a, and was openly called, in fact, like a sort of a woolly liberal, sometimes even a communist. But what I've always been is anti-establishment, pro-individual freedom. I've always been in favor of people being able to be who they are and live their lives how they want to. I've always been in favor of people being able to run their communities with as little intervention from the state and with as little disruption from private, corrupt, Goliath interests as possible. But it seems now that there is more opportunity for new alliances, whether it's in the world of entertainment and media or politically. And I suppose what you're saying is, is that we're going to see more of that and it's going to be more effective and even the the candidacy of Vivek and the candidacy of uh, uh, RFK demonstrates that it's becoming effective in political spaces and Sound of Freedom shows it's effective in media spaces. So I guess what you're saying is we're going to see a lot more of this. Where in particular do you think it's going to be pronounced, Patrick? Uh, in regards to what? More of people like us rising up? Like what industry? Yeah, what industries do you imagine are going to be most meaningfully disrupted? Would oh, you say it? Yes. Attain media, politics? Yes. So, so, so I'll give you a couple of them. So, so let's go through one of them. Look at Hollywood. Most people don't realize that this whole, whole concept, why we call it Hollywood, Hollywood was never Hollywood. Hollywood was in Jersey being ran by a guy named Thomas Edison, and Thomas Edison controlled all the actors and actresses. Eventually... They decided to leave Jersey and go to Hollywood because they revolted against the establishment at the time Edison was establishment, and they went to Hollywood and started making movies in Hollywood, Burbank. That's what they did. They went away from Jersey. Hollywood forgot that that's why they're in Hollywood. Now they're going to be leaving Hollywood and going elsewhere. And by the way, this whole strike thing that's going on and, you know, all the AI fears that they have and, you know, with Bob Iger and going back and forth with writers. Now it's been, what, two months? I think a little over two months. I think the last time Jimmy Kimmel or Jimmy Fallon did a show was May 12th or May 14th, some number like that. They have not done a show because they can't. They don't have the writers to do it, right? So they're on a strike. You're seeing the strikes taking place in a few different industries, but Hollywood's going through disruption in a, in a very uh, different way. There's this lady actress, I'm sure you know who she is, who's playing Snow White. I don't remember her name, but she's sitting there saying, the new Snow White we're making, it's not the same Snow White of 1937. It's a different kind of a Snow White. There is not really a love story. Maybe you want to call it that, but there's not because women are now independent and they're this and they're that and they're this. I posed a question to Bob Iger yesterday on Twitter and I said, Bob, I know for a fact you're a smart CEO. I've read your book. You're a very smart guy. I have a hard time believing you think this is a good idea. This is costing you generations of loyal viewers who followed Disney. At what cost? At an ESG score? A at the funding for us to get the best institutional money? from BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard for what? Because you're planning on breaking apart Disney and selling ESPN, and you're going to sell a couple of the legs, and you forgot about what Walt's vision was, what this whole concept of Disney was, what we grew up with these movies. Snow White was a girl's dream growing up to find a man that's going to kiss her and fall in love, and now we're looking at courting as stalking. It, 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 that's a bad thing nowadays. Men are afraid to court because that's what is considered nowadays. A man's man today who stands up and defends his family and takes care of his wife and his kids, that's toxic masculinity, all this nonsense. We cannot be buying into this kind of stuff because contradictions are now starting to show up. And even guys like that, they're going to figure it out. So it's going to happen in Hollywood. It's going to happen with ESG. One of the concerns that you talk about a lot, which you and I are on the same page with, with this whole thing with military industrial complex that Eisenhower prepared us for, for a long time ago, and Kennedy followed suit. And then we're realizing now what's going on with, you know, the concepts are very simple. I'm a capitalist. I run businesses. So for example, you know how shows work. You're not with Rumble. The more eyeballs you get, the more comments you get, the more subs you get, 
the better you can ask for sponsorship. The deals can be bigger. So if Joe got a massive deal from Spotify, it's because Joe gets eyeballs. It's capitalism. Spotify is willing to pay the money because Joe runs a number one podcast in 94 different countries on Spotify. Okay, he's got the number two most female listeners worldwide, and he's not a female, you know, podcast. Is Joe running his podcast? What's the moral of the story? The basic concept of capitalism: If Russell, you and I own five hotels in UK. We own five hotels in Miami. We would want to know a couple numbers. One number we want to know is how many rooms do we have? What is the price per room that we're renting out? And we want as many rooms to be rented as possible, right? So if we got 2,000 total rooms and we're sitting there saying, hey, Russell, good day today. We're texting at night. Hey, just got a report from our COO. Out of our five hotels, 2,000 rooms, 1,873 was used today. Good day. 90 plus percent. Boom. Awesome. Text back. Fantastic. Hey, today was a shitty day. Out of our 2,000 rooms, only 800 rooms were taken. Kind of a rough day on Wednesday night. Damn, what are we doing about it? I don't know. We're having a call tomorrow morning. Okay. If we ran a hospital, we own five of them. What, what allows us to make more money if we have five uh, hospitals and we got 2,000 beds? We need more sick people. Think about that for a second. The incentive is more sick people per hospital bed that a person stays there. We make $440 up to $1,800 a night in America the more people are sick. So is the business model more sick people, more money we make? Yes. So why would we want people to have better diet? And no, we don't need that. We need people to eat shitty food. We need people to not take care of themselves because we need people to come here or else we go out of business. So watch the next one here. All right, so military, what is the concept of Raytheon, Northrop Grumman, you know, General Dynamics and all these guys? Well, if we look at the top institutional money they're getting is also from who? Same three people. You know these names, BlackRock, State Street, Vanguard. Top three out of four on almost every one of those four companies I mentioned. They need more wars because more wars equals more money. More money equals more profit. And then we could be the savior and all of a sudden, Chase and BlackRock signed a $400 billion contract to fix and help rebuild Ukraine. So th these are industries that the more we talk about this stuff, people start questioning it, and they're going to have to pivot. And you're starting to see SMP says, we're no longer looking at your S uh, uh, ESG score. And McDonald's removed every single word on their website of ESG. We're making progress. So there's going to be a lot of different industries will be disrupted the more we talk about it. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.